lesson in this series on data handling, we used scatter plots to find out whether there is a correlation between two sets of data or not. We saw that a scatter plot is made up of separate plotted points. Each point represents two variables for each person or thing we are interested in. Then we saw that the points on a scatter plot sometimes indicate a pattern or trend in the data. In other words, the points sometimes show that there is a correlation between the two sets of data. Two of the scatter plots we looked at showed a positive correlation. They showed that as one variable increases, the other variable also increases. This one had a weak correlation and this one had a strong correlation. In your task, you also looked at a scatter plot that showed a negative correlation. As the one variable increased, the other variable decreased. One of our scatter plots showed no correlation at all. We also noticed that a correlation between two sets of data only shows that they occur together. When the one event occurs, the other also tends to occur. It doesn't necessarily mean that the one variable causes the other. And we saw that we can draw a line on a scatter plot to show how the points are clustered and what the trend in the data is. This is called the line of best fit, and we use it to show the general trend of the data. In a strong correlation, although some of the points don't fall on the line, they are near the line. In a weaker correlation, there are more points that don't fall on the line and don't necessarily fit the trend shown by the line. So how do we know where to place this line? What if we shift it up slightly like this? Or turn it like this? Would it still be the line of best fit? This is one of the questions we will consider today. Here's another question to consider. In this scatter plot, is there a trend in the plotted points? And if there is a trend, can you describe it with a line of best fit? Can you see that there is a trend in these points, but the trend isn't a straight line? We need to find another way of describing this trend. In today's lesson, we want to find different rules or functions to describe the relationships between variables on a scatter plot. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to analyze scatter plots to draw lines and curves of best fit and decide whether linear, quadratic or exponential functions would best fit the data. Researchers often use scatter plots as a starting point in their research. Scatter plots show them at a glance what kind of relationship there is between two different variables. Let's look at this example of a scatter plot. It represents research done to find out whether the height of parents can be used to predict the height of their child. Is it true that children tend to be taller if their parents are tall? In this research, the heights of a group of women and the heights of both parents of each woman were recorded. They calculated the mid-parent height for each woman, that is, the height halfway between the mother's height and the father's height. Then, they plotted each woman's height and their parents' mid-parent height on this scatter plot. In the scatter plot, do you see a trend in the data? And is this what you would expect to happen? The data confirms what we had expected. Taller people tend to have taller parents. Now, we can draw a line of best fit on this data. And we know that it will lie more or less here 
and that it will have a positive slope. But how do we know exactly where to draw it in? There are methods to follow to make sure that the line is in the position that best fits all of the points. Here's one easy check that we can use. We have to try to balance the number of points above the line with the number of points below the line. The line must represent all the points rather than trying to join up the points. It is important to be careful when you do this by hand. Let's shift this line around until it seems to fit most of the points and seems to have the same number of points above it as they are below it. Will this work? No. Perhaps we should shift it down a little. Let's turn it this way a little more. There. Now let's see if that works. There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 points above the line and 5 points below the line. I think we have found a good position for the line of best fit. As you can see, our method is not exact. This line is the best approximation that we can find. If you're able to use an Excel spreadsheet to make a scatter plot, then you can insert a trend line quickly and accurately. Let me show you. We've made the scatter plot for heights on this computer. Now, I just ask for the trend line like this and it places it for me. So, this line of best fit provides a good description of the trend of the data. As you know from your work on functions, the line is a graphical representation of a linear function. So, we can say that this linear function describes the trend of the data. But, why do we use the line of best fit? And how does it help us understand the data better? Well, mathematics plays a very important role in research. Although data in the real world is messier than calculations on paper, we use maths to set up models to help us understand how data behaves. The line of best fit gives us a model for how the variables behave. Mathematical models help us to predict and explain what is happening in a set of data. If you think of the line as a model, we can use it to explain the relationship in the data. We can also use it to predict other values that have not been plotted. For example, if Mrs. Mabena's height is 1,67 meters and Mr. Mabena's height is 1,73 meters, we can use the graph to predict how tall their daughter Pindi will be when she's an adult. We can work out the height halfway between the mother's height and the father's height. That will be 1,67 plus 1,73 divided by 2. So that's 3,4 divided by 2, which is 1,7. Using the trend line, we can find 1,7 on the x-axis. Move up to the line and predict that their daughter's height will be 1,66 meters. But be careful when you use this to predict values. If the scatter plot does not have a strong correlation, then your prediction will have less chance of being accurate. In other words, Pindi might have more chance of not fitting the trend established in the scatter plot. Here's another thing to be careful about. Why do you think I have not extended the line to cross the y-axis? A scatter plot only tells us about data within the range shown on the graph. If you try to extend the best fit line on either side of the graph, your prediction will not necessarily be valid. We can only draw the part of the linear function that falls within the range of the data we've collected. We don't have information about the way the variables behave outside of this range. Our model only works within the range of data we have. For all we know, data that is close to the axis over here might behave in a different way from the rest of the data. And we don't know for sure what happens at this end of the graph where the parents are much taller than any of the parents that we have data for. This is all part of being a good researcher. Check whether you can reasonably expect your predictions to be valid. 
Then, there are scatter plots like the one I showed you earlier, which do not have a linear correlation, but the points certainly show a trend. Let's take a closer look at this scatter plot and see if we can describe the trend. This plot is based on research into the possible link between the amount of fluoride in the water and the number of cavities children get in their teeth. If children under the age of six take a small amount of fluoride as a supplement, it strengthens their teeth and helps to prevent them from getting holes or cavities in their teeth. In many areas of South Africa, town councils decided to put a small amount of fluoride into the drinking water. They hoped that this would provide the fluoride needed to strengthen all the children's teeth in the community. After a few years of using different amounts of fluoride in the water, researchers were asked to check whether this measure was successful in preventing tooth decay. The question they need to find an answer to is, is it true that the more fluoride you put in the water, the fewer cavities there will be in children's teeth? So, they measured the amount of fluoride in the water in different areas, some that had been using fluoride and some that had not. They did a survey on the number of cavities children had in these areas and plotted the data on this scatter plot. The points up here are for areas where the amount of fluoride in the water is low. In these areas, the number of cavities reported is very high. Do you see a trend in the plotted points? The number of cavities is lower in areas where there is more fluoride in the water, which is what we would expect to see. As the fluoride content of the water increases, it seems that the trend is for the number of cavities to decrease. Do you think you can place a line of best fit onto the graph that will describe the trend? Although this might look like a negative correlation, a straight line won't describe this trend very well. But we could put a curved line onto the data like this. The number of cavities decreases quite quickly from here to here on the graph as the fluoride levels increase. Then they start to level off a bit and the graph becomes almost flat. Does this shape remind you of a function that we have worked with in algebra? This curve looks like a decreasing exponential curve. The rate of decrease is fast at first and then it slows down. We call this exponential decay or compound decay. The curve represents an exponential function and we can use it to model the relationship between these two variables. So, we've shown that there is a relationship between the amount of fluoride in the drinking water and the number of cavities at these levels of fluoride. But at around about these levels, adding more fluoride has very little further effect on the number of cavities. So there is no point in adding more fluoride to the water. If children have too much fluoride while their teeth are still developing, this is also not good for them. What do you think this model can be used for? Perhaps the health authorities could use the model to decide on the right amount of fluoride to put into drinking water. Let's look at another scatter plot. Whether it is in soccer, rugby, swimming or athletics, people are always trying to find out how to improve their performance. Researchers in the area of sport are able to compare different aspects of the sport or variables to see what affects performance in various sports. For example, researchers have looked at the relationship between body mass and strength. An experiment was carried out to compare the body mass of weightlifters to the amount of weight that they can lift. This is the scatter plot and the best fit function they found. What do you notice about the trend of this data? Were you surprised to see that the relationship is not linear? If it were, we could say that the heavier a person is, the more weight they can lift. This curve suggests that the relationship does increase. So, in general, the heavier a person is, the more weight they can lift is true. But only up to this point on the graph. This line curves and it even starts to decrease again. This means that, at first, 
the amount of mass that they can lift increases rapidly with an increase in body mass. But after a while, the rate of increase is much slower. At a certain point, the curve stops showing an increase and starts to decrease. As we pointed out in previous graphs, we can't extend the curve beyond this point as we don't have data for heavier weightlifters. We can use the curve to predict what might happen with heavier weightlifters, but we would have to collect more data to check our prediction. Look at the shape of the curve. Do you recognize this shape? Although it looks similar to the exponential decay graph we looked at just now, it is not an exponential graph. An exponential graph doesn't decrease again, it gets flatter. In this case, the curve reaches a maximum and then decreases. The maximum point is a turning point. What kind of graph do you know about that has a turning point like this? This curve behaves like a parabola. In fact, we can use a quadratic function to model this relationship. But the relationship only works for the data values that we've shown, so we don't see the whole parabola. How do you think the quadratic function helps us to understand this data? What the curve shows us is something we already know about quadratic functions or parabolas. Parabolas that turn downwards always have a maximum value. They reach a maximum value at the turning point. Using the quadratic curve as a model, we can make a conjecture. The amount of weight that weightlifters can lift has a maximum value. And we can also see that this maximum is reached at a certain body mass. If their body mass is higher than this value, their performance tends to go down again and they cannot pick up as heavy weights as did those people who weigh 140 kilograms. Remember that with all these scatter plots, you should not try to force the graph to the shape you want to see. Good researchers ensure that they do not impose what they hope to see onto their data. They have to try to remain impartial and unbiased. Let's summarize what we've learned in this lesson. Scatter plots can give us a lot of information about bivariate data and the relationship between the two sets of data. They can tell us whether or not there is a correlation between the two sets of data. If there is a correlation, they can tell us whether it is a positive or increasing correlation or a negative decreasing correlation. There can be a strong correlation or a weak correlation. A line of best fit can be used to describe the correlation. The line represents a linear function and we can use functions as mathematical models to explain the way variables relate to each other. A linear function is useful for modeling a relationship where one variable increases or decreases in proportion to the other. An exponential function is useful for modeling a relationship where a variable increases or decreases exponentially in relation to the other. In this case, the parabola turns downward. Or we could also use a parabola that turns upwards to model a relationship where one variable decreases rapidly in relation to the other, reaches a minimum, and then increases rapidly again. When we use scatter plots to make predictions, we must be careful not to assume that the variables will behave in the same way for values that are outside the range of values that we recorded. Now it's time for your task. Here's a scatter plot of athletic performance against age for athletes. Each point on the plot represents the athlete's performance at the particular event plotted against their age at the time of the event. What does this scatter plot reveal about the athlete's performance over time? And describe the changes you see. Also, what kind of function do you think would fit this scatter plot? Give reasons. That's all from the series on data handling. Until next time, enjoy your maths.
Thank you.